What's up YouTube? Today we're looking at a Dexter Cleaver that may or may not have been on the channel before. Number 5387. Um, supposedly made in the USA, although I will say I have heard there is some sneakiness and perhaps that these are not actually made in the US or were made. I mean, they're vintage now. I got this for under $25 because I watch eBay like a hawk. Um, you may or may not get a good deal. I put a force patina on it because it is carbon steel and it will, like you splash water on it, like any carbon steel, you leave it there, it patinas. Um, I used a liquid on this instead of the paste or the slime, which may or may not have been a big mistake as far as aesthetics go. I'm not really so concerned with that. Um, I just wanted to protect it. I also went over it with uh, bowling alley wax, which is a wax made from the leaves of tropical plants. Um, I forget the technical name for it, but that is also going to put another layer of protection on this blade. As you can see, there are three rivets. It's full tang. I mean, this is a high quality piece of cutlery. It was also the first that I had in my collection as far as actual like decent kitchen knives for a long time and i don't know if you can see it but this has a little bit flatter than the rest of it a little less belly because i dulled this so much it took a lot to bring it back it was the only knife i had that was really worth a damn for a while in the kitchen anyway um i'm always surprised to hear how many people that are collectors use terrible kitchen cutlery instead of using things that are part of American heritage. But hey, whatever, it's your kitchen. Uh, most people really don't cook that much either. I cook all the time, just the way it is. Um, as you can see, there, this is a very shiny piece. The patina, after all, is oil and uh, basically floating on the steel. And then I put wax on it to not only arrest the patina, but to protect it further. Um, this piece is pretty big. It's also pretty heavy. As far as cutting surface is concerned, let me find my, let me find my, I don't know where it's at. I don't know where my ruler is at. Um, yeah, this is, I think seven inches and then the handle is about six. So 13 or so overall. Um, it's a pretty simple piece, but I will say if you're not willing to use it correctly, you will dull it out very quickly. Uh, what I mean by that is like for me, I ended up using this front edge right here a lot because I was trying to do a lot of different stuff with it that it's just not made for. You also need to use a honing steel on this regularly to keep it good to go. Um, keeping your stuff in cutting edge order, so to speak, is going to make it last a lot longer. So be ready for that. Um, I don't know what else I could say for this, except that, oh, I sharpen on a rod system. And uh, that's pretty easy, especially because I have diamond rods. Um, if you don't have diamond rods and you do totally blow out the edge, it will be somewhat difficult to bring back into working order. Um, it's not impossible, but I mean, even with the diamond rods, you're going to be working on it for a minute. Uh, thanks for sticking with me. That's about all she wrote for this one. And I hope you folks have a great rest of your day. Bye now.